Welcome to the Grace Point Publishing Podcast. Today, we continue our first chapter segment where our authors narrate a section of their book for you. In this episode, Evelyn Levinson shares a section from her best-selling book, Becoming an Empowered Projector, Thrive with Wisdom and Guidance from Human Design. Please see the show notes for information on how to buy Evelyn's book and connect further with her work. And now, here's your narrator, Evelyn Levinson. It is incredibly powerful for projectors to come together, share experiences, and feel seen and heard. It is in this spirit that I share my journey to provide insight into the lived experience of a projector and to offer a different approach than most human design texts. When I first saw my human design chart in 2008, I did not like it. It looked angular, ugly, and weird, and was not helpful at all. I had encountered human design a few weeks earlier. I attended a teleclass Karen Curry, now Karen Curry Parker, and Brad Yates offered on EFT, Emotional Freedom Techniques. I was particularly intrigued by Karen. She seemed to have a deep understanding and wisdom about how the world works and what is possible. There was something about the way she talked about people and life that spoke to me. On Karen's website, I found an entire section about something called human design, which wasn't even mentioned during the teleclass. The more I read about it, the more interested I became. It sounded amazing, so I requested my free chart. Life got busy, and it was several weeks before I read the email. I opened the attachment and saw my chart. Ew. Weird. I quickly scanned the free report that accompanied it, Nothing much there explained anything about my specific chart, which was frustrating, and I was too busy to spend any more time on it. A few months later, I finally had the chance to look at the chart again. I fully read the report this time. I saw that I was a projector type and learned what it said about us. A little light bulb flickered, then lit up in my mind. This information made sense to me. How strange. How could this weird-looking chart and generic description of my type fit me so well? It explained so much about how my life had worked and had not worked. I immediately thought back to my career and saw, to my great surprise, that the best jobs and career moves I had ever made were always from a personal invitation. I had never noticed that before. Then, I thought about the times I tried to force things to happen, which never worked, and the times I applied for jobs I wanted but never got, despite stellar credentials. The patterns were clear in retrospect. I used to think, actually worry, that there was something wrong with me. Why couldn't I land a job? Why was it so hard to make things happen in my life and career while it seemed that others weren't having the tough time I was having? Was I somehow fundamentally flawed? Or was there some trick I just hadn't learned yet? What was I missing? When I attended conferences and other large gatherings, I would feel overwhelmed and want to go to my hotel room early in the evening to be alone rather than try to meet people and hang out with them. I wasn't an antisocial person. In fact, I was quite personable and most people liked me. So what was going on? After returning home from these events, I would usually call in sick the next day so I could stay home and rest. I didn't want to go anywhere or get things done around the house or even watch TV or listen to music. I wanted to sit quietly and maybe read or do a crossword puzzle. What the heck was wrong with me? The more I read about projectors, there wasn't much way back then, the more amazed I was. I had my partner's chart generated. It turned out that he is a projector, too. What? That seemed impossible to me. We are so different in so many ways. But when he read the description of projectors, it resonated with him. He said it explained so much about his experiences. Wow. Then I had a friend's chart created. She is also a projector, and the description totally resonated with her. I was amazed and started to think there really was something to all of this. I requested other charts, who were other types, thank goodness, and their descriptions were a remarkable fit. 
At this point, I knew I had to learn more about human design, if only to help me understand myself and my quirks and the people in my life and their quirks. Within two months of starting Karen's nine-month specialist training course, it was one long continuous course at that time, I was hooked, and I knew in my bones and the depths of my soul that there was nothing on the planet I wanted to do more than learn this system and help others with it by doing readings and teaching. Honestly, that shocked me. First, because it was such a departure from my background. I had two master's degrees, one in government and one in business, and had achieved reasonable success in both arenas. What was I doing diving into this woo-woo stuff? The second shock was that I felt so certain. I had been notorious for having a hard time deciding things. I'm a Libra, and I always wanted to look at all sides, weigh the pros and cons to come to the best conclusion. This decision was totally different. I had learned from my human design studies that I have splenic authority for making decisions, which means that I get information in the moment about whether something is right or healthy for me. In this case, my splenic yes was unmistakable. Of course, my mind tried to second-guess me and talk me out of it, but there was something about the deep certainty I felt that I trusted. That trust has grown daily ever since. Another reason for the shock was that I would be working one-on-one with people. I had never done that. I didn't know if I would like it or be any good at it. My first few attempts at doing human design readings, freebies so I could practice, were a little rough but I stuck with it and got better and more comfortable with it. It has turned out to be the most rewarding work I have ever done. Since 2009, I've been doing human design readings professionally while taking dozens and dozens of courses to deepen my study and improve the quality of my readings. There is still nothing I would rather do on this planet. As I learned more and more about being a projector, and worked with projector clients, I slowly relaxed into and accepted my type, despite my initial resistance and disappointment. Being unhappy about being a projector is a fairly common reaction and completely understandable. How are we supposed to get anything done, let alone succeed and thrive, if we're not here to work? It sounded like the hardest and worst type to be. Gradually, I began to see some core truths about projectors that were not being explained clearly anywhere. First, we do have energy. It's just different from the other types. Second, we can take action, even without an invitation. Although our results might not always be great, there is no rule to stop us. Third, we can manifest the things we want in our lives. Our process just looks different. Fourth, we are not simply at the mercy of the world around us, powerless and overlooked. Fifth, we are critically important to the world. As I learn to trust my process and pay attention to the flow of energy and the responses of people around me, I gradually began to step into my own power. This was huge for me. I had always been smart, but I never felt powerful. On top of that, classic descriptions of projectors didn't include the concept that projectors can be powerful, and those materials never described how projectors could legitimately claim their power. As I personally felt more empowered as a projector, I saw how critical it is that many more of my fellow projectors become empowered so they can fulfill their role of guiding others and be the full contribution of their unique selves. It's pretty obvious that the world could use some extra help right now. I also became aware of the pivotal and vital role we are here to play in service to all humanity. It is not acceptable to me that projectors feel disempowered and struggle in this world. In that condition, we cannot serve as we are meant to serve, and everyone is worse off for that. I now see my mission in life as empowering people to know and love themselves. Human design is the most amazing tool I have ever found to help do that. 
I further discovered that I have a vital specific mission within that to help my fellow projectors step into their crucial role in the evolution of humanity and joyfully live in their brilliance, power, and sweet success so they create a life they love. This book is an expression of that specific mission. May you be empowered to live a joyful and confident life, knowing that you are not broken, but that you are extraordinary, amazing, and more valuable than you can imagine. You are different from everyone else, and thank goodness for that. The world awaits and needs the full expression of your brilliance. When you know who you are and why you are here, your paths and destinations can be consistently correct for you. Quote, you cannot have a happy ending to an unhappy journey. End quote. Abraham Hicks. This book is about becoming an empowered projector. But what does it mean to be empowered, especially as a projector? What is empowerment, and how does one get it, have it, and keep it? Here is a helpful way to look at it. Empowerment is a process and a journey, not a fixed destination. So it isn't that I have arrived at empowerment and there's nothing more to do. There can always be a new journey, a new challenge, a new path, and a new process that takes us further. We can always step more deeply into feeling good about ourselves, trusting ourselves, feeling confident, knowing at our soul level that we aren't broken, standing clearly in our power and setting healthy boundaries that not only protect our energy, but that bring forth the fullest and most generous expression of who we are. Making a difference in the world in our own very unique way. Being unfettered in our ability to thrive in this world. These are good touchstones for feeling empowered. Here is another useful perspective. Being empowered is a state of being and a state of mind. You are empowered because you say you are, and because you choose to be. With all of that said, there is much we can do together to clarify this empowerment journey. We will look at the mile markers of progress, the detours and potholes, the joys of our discoveries along the way, and the exuberance of our movement through time and space towards a destination worth reaching, empowerment, knowing that we can always start a new journey from there. This is my why for writing this book, to help you on your journey to thriving as a projector, no matter where you are starting. We begin with knowing who we are as projectors so we can know why we are here. This knowledge will help us set paths and destinations in our lives that make sense, that allow for a joyful experience, and that resonate with us to our very core. These are destinations not only worth reaching, but totally aligned with our energy and the truth of our nature. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Grace Point Publishing Authors Podcast. We can't wait to talk more next time as we introduce you to another one of our amazing authors. Make sure you hit subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform so you never miss a single episode of the Grace Point Publishing Authors Podcast. To find out more about our authors and to see how we can help you publish your book, head to gracepointpublishing.com. Keep writing. Keep creating. Your words matter.